Hey guys, Desolator Magic back with another great video. This one's a super short one. I thought I'd just answer one question that I keep getting in real life and to a lesser degree on YouTube and online because people are Google adjacent, so they'll just Google it and look it up. <laughs> but um, every time I say, hey, you know, I just tested my deck on X-Mage. Number one question, what the heck is X-Mage? The most accurate answer I could give is it's pretty much a free ripoff of MTGO, and uh, apparently Germany is just out of suing distance or something. I don't know. I have no idea why it's still around. Um, I think it promotes the game, and people who aren't going to play MTGO just aren't going to play MTGO. So maybe Wizards kind of got a brain and said this is somewhere between doing nothing and not harming the game. Somewhere in between those. Um... You know, doesn't sound like something a large corporation would do from America these days. <laughs> You'd never see, like, Hollywood saying that about people pirating a movie. I guess the closest you get is HBO saying... Or actually, it wasn't HBO. They didn't say it. Um, the creators of uh, a show on HBO, the little little show you might have heard of called um, Game of Thrones, they said, yeah, the fact that, like, 99% of people watching it actually pirate it is actually, like, helping us monetize it and sell side products and getting people interested in a show that normally nobody would ever watch. So um, maybe Wizards is kind of, I don't know, feeling that vibe i i don't know i i kind of doubt it i have no idea why it's not shut down yet maybe it's all just a bunch of anonymous folks and they can't convince germany to take down the server that is a lot more likely well x mages legal problems are not my problem i'm just the tour guide today i guess so um here's the loader it runs on java it is actually quite literally a jar file which is like you know, the Java version of an EXE, basically. That's a drastic oversimplification, but um, you, you have to have Java on your system to run the launcher. So that's annoying because I hate Java. It's the worst thing to happen to browser security in the last five years that I've ever heard of. So that's a little bit of a problem. But um, the cool thing is once you get it downloaded, it will download its own private local copy of Java that it uses. But then when you uninstall Java from your system, something changes and the batch file that are supposed to run the game don't run so if you have no idea what i just said basically go download java then go download this and then when you open whatever your choice of browser is and it says do you want to turn on the the web plugin for java just hit no i mean you could have java installed locally and just tell it not to hook into the browsers actually no you can't tell it to not hook into the browsers you have to tell your browser not to let it hook into it Anyway, Java's a real flexible but clunky and inefficient programming language. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to get some hate about that, but I'm a Windows programmer, sorry. Uh, and uh, yeah, it runs on anything. So you could run this on your phone, your DVR, your freaking, like, anything. If it's smart, it runs Java, basically. So um, you could run this on a Mac. So that's cool. So that's why people say, I'm going to choose Java. Like, either they're a complete mental patient, or they only know Java, or they actually want it to run on multiple platforms, and that's why they chose it because that's like the ideal way to do it these days once you load it up this is your main window here with all the buttons on top and uh the less important buttons in the top right that's how you download your uh, images of the cards by the way because uh they most certainly would get sued a lot quicker if they aren't already if they actually included the game's artwork because that's like mega no debate whatsoever copyrighted so um what you do is you click on images and this is actually kind of funny i don't know if they got permission to do this or not i mean the, given the type of project, probably not, but I mean, I don't know, I'm just speculating. <laughs> but um, basically, you can choose one of these four servers to download your card images from. And uh, I don't know, Mythic Spoiler might play along. I have a feeling Wizards.com didn't play along, though. <laughs> Just the strangest feeling that they don't like people downloading 1.3 gigabytes of JPEGs one at a time from their server. But uh, I don't know about the other ones. Never heard of the other two. So it's probably three volunteers and then wizards just they own a bunch of servers and can't stop them, I guess. If the program makes an FTP request, they aren't going to know if it came from a program or if it came from a browser. So they, they just they can't block it. They can't just say block all XMage traffic. Next most important part is the deck builder. It's got pretty much every card ever written. You just type it in the search there. Like I just searched for trick bind. It'll show the graphic down at the bottom left if it has it. 99.9% .9 of the cards it does have the graphics for. Or actually whatever. I think it doesn't have 200 out of some amount. 24,000 or something. I don't remember. So pretty good ratio of art. And uh, you can load, save your deck. You can import it from a text file from another format, from another game. Um, that's kind of cool. Doesn't work with MTGO, though, I don't believe, for the save decks. 
and then uh, you just basically add what you add. So we're looking at um, Beholder 3.0 Alpha, of course, my favorite deck, because I was just beating the living crap out of people with it all night. So, um, you know, got the sideboard down there, shows you the card count, it breaks down everything, your land, your uh, uh, creature count. I feel like I should have looked up what these symbols mean ahead of time, but I've got 15 of those little fireballs. <laughs> I guess my artifacts aren't on there. Artifacts aren't important enough to be counted. So when you hit connect, you're on the servers. You can connect to yourself. That'll be the last entry that says localhost. That's a loopback um, keyword, I guess you could say, that goes in. Uh, why am I telling you guys all this technical grab? You guys don't care. So <laughs> it loops back at yourself, and um, you can play against the AI. Um, so that's cool. So that's the only reason to choose localhost, because if you did AI to one of the servers, you'd be wasting their bandwidth just to play against yourself, or not really yourself, a really, really potato intelligence computer. So um, I'm obviously connected to the North America USA server, and you can kind of register like a username and a password on the fly, and then they just ask for your email for the purposes of, I assume, recovering your password or something. So um, you can just create a name, um... I think Big Booty Judy is still available if you wanted that one. Um, Big Booty Ho is already taken, though. I did check that. I'm sure you're like, ha, 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 he's making a funny joke. Nope. There she is. Once you get on the server, this is your interface of uh, games that are going on, all kinds of, like, draft tournaments and, like, multi-round, multi-game things going on. And then, you know, at the very top, it's sorted by if you can join it or if it's already there. And then you can spectate other games. So it's pretty flexible and pretty cool. I like it quite a bit. Here's the interface when you make a game. You can put a little note for people. You can put a password on it if it's supposed to be a private game for just your friends. Uh, the only problem is people will try to join it and pick out a deck, and then they'll leave the password field blank because it's there regardless, and you really don't know if it's a password-protected game. So then all of a sudden it says, oh, you can't get in, wrong password. And you're like, oh, crap, I really wanted to play with that one. Uh, you might have noticed I put no Aldrazi allowed. Pretty much every single game says that. I haven't seen so much, like disallowance since uh let's see probably command and conquer generals no super weapon generals um yeah from the zero hour expansion pretty much 100 percent of the game said no swg i actually have a bit of a history of that i remember red alert 2 said no yuri you can set the free mulligans one through five usually zero you can put the wins at two if you want to do two out of three you could do you know three out of five if you want to do like a final table type of thing but most people won't go for that um, I like sideboarding because I actually, um, I turned on win in two so that it's two out of three and I versed a dude running some kind of court of calling life gain angel counter crap, you know, some OP is crap, stupid net deck. I'm, I think it's probably the one that just came in ninth at the tournament. I don't know. I'm too lazy to check and I just don't care. But, um, I actually, he just barely beat me on like turn 30 which does not happen very often, but I started with zero land, so I was about, you know, six turns behind by the time my deck got going, because he put it on free mulligan zero, but I shouldn't have kept it. But it was two vapor snakes, two anti-magic, and two creatures, and then one something. I don't know. You can't ask for a better hand than that, except lands would have been nice. But um, I sideboarded in silence and trick bind. <laughs> and so, let me think. Yeah, it was turn two. I summoned Isochron with silence on it, and he, he just concedes. <laughs> just He quit. He didn't even just quit the game. He actually quit the entire series. <laughs> so he quit, like, the round, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah, like I say, when it's it's an emergency sideboard. If, if you know you can't beat the deck, put in silence and Angel's Grace. If you just don't like the deck and it's it's uh, a little bit slow, just a little bit slow, not a lot of one cost in it, you could put in silence and just hope it nails Isochron. Or you could just shut him down for a turn and buy yourself a turn. It was kind of like remand. So, uh, you know, with that story, I gotta say, hey, this feels exactly like real life. You never know what you're gonna get. Realistic sideboard opportunities. They got the chat on there. And, you know, he was friendly. He was cool. The guy I played before that was friendly. Uh, when I was playing like three nights ago, every last person was a raging dick. So um, it's the internet. You never know what you're going to get. But uh, when you start talking crap about their net deck and tell them to make their own deck, then, you know, they get all defensive. But speaking of that, every last damn person I have ever played ever since I installed X-Mage is running a net deck that I recognize or that I've at least vaguely heard about. 
So yeah, it's going to be a 100% thousand dollar deck and up net deck fest because I mean, why would you come over to X mage from MTGO? I don't know, probably to play a thousand dollar deck without having to buy it. So, I mean, I don't like blame the people and I know net decking is a problem in MTGO X mage and real life. So, you know, whatever, but my deck keeps winning. So how much could I possibly complain? Besides the online component that I just discussed, uh, I gotta go back to the whole playing against the computer thing. Yeah, the computer's gonna run the deck like an idiot, but what you usually should do is as soon as you build a deck, it takes about three minutes to take it from a spreadsheet or a physical sort of deck in front of you and make it a deck on here. I mean, you just type it in search, add, 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 go verify the quantities, yay, go. Um, and then you play against the AI and you're going to win pretty much every time. I mean, I lost to it a couple times just because it had better draws, but it knows aggro and it knows traditional, you know, spells and, and ambush and stuff, but it doesn't think very far ahead at all. Um, but it will make logical swing decisions and stuff. It's a little conservative on creature training, but, um, you know, it's not bad, but I learned some triggers and some rules and some little things that just, I didn't know. Like if I ran my, um white black vampire allies deck against itself i had no idea absolutely no idea and you guys know i'm an ra for another uh location and basically their head judge not certified though um if you take a creature with lifelink and let me think and it gets blocked by three creatures and you assign one point of damage to one, one point of damage to another, and the remaining damage to the third creature, or however you want to do it, you actually trigger Cliffhaven Vampire's ability three times. Now, I probably just blew all of your minds, because, I mean, who would possibly know that? Don't say you know it down in the comment section, we all know you don't know that. But, um... Basically, I thought, well, okay, you're hitting once, you're dealing combat damage once, it's one source, it's one instance, no problem. Um, I know that if you swing with three creatures with lifelink, you get three triggers. It's three different instances because it's three different sources. But apparently, if you hit three creatures with one creature with lifelink, you lifelinked three times because the actual, I guess, resulting action is like the life gain is from three different sources. It doesn't matter what the triggering source was, which, you know, it makes sense, but you'd never know that unless X made stacked up nine triggers. and You're like, what the hell just happened? So I find that very, very, very useful because not only am I playing accurately with the deck in real life, but then I'm playing it. Um, I guess you would say like to its maximum potential. So that's just huge, huge, huge for deck testing. And uh, I've never seen X made go wrong Except when it let a guy get out two Eye of Ugans. That was fun. Friggin' Endless Ones coming out for four, paying zero. And, uh, I hate that deck so much, I can't wait for them to ban it. In case you're like, what's he talking about? It's legendary, it's supposed to blow up. I actually purposely went into a game and brought out two legendary creatures. And yeah, it, it said, which one do you want to keep? So it just glitched out on him. But then the game actually crashed. It actually kicked him out of the game a couple turns later. So, you know, there you go. Karma. I recommend you all just check it out. Um, I'm going to do like a how to really set it up and just run through the whole setup and configuration and everything once, but you'll probably get most of it from this video, so I'm not in a real big hurry on it. But uh, yeah, it's really cool. All the English is perfect, even though it's a German program. Um, but that's cool because like, honestly, everybody in Germany speaks English, <laughs> according to my German friend. I'd actually strongly recommend that you guys... Um, uh, go check out X-Mage and get it installed, test it out, get used to the controls. Definitely do not play online before you check out the game controls against the AI, please. Because it really pisses off us people who want to like play a game in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> but of course I say this because I might be holding like some kind of first person to beat me wins a prize type of thing. Or everybody who beats me goes into a drawing or something like that. In case you didn't catch it in one of the screenshots, my name on there is Desolator Magic. I'm not that hard to find. It's like... I don't know, not that many people on. I was going to estimate a number, but I have no idea. Probably less than a thousand. But uh, yeah, you definitely want to check it out and uh, get some decks together, get them saved, and uh, might just find me on and be able to try to beat me. Now, see, I'm more likely to uh, hold some kind of weird event thing on um, X-Mage instead of anywhere else because, well, you might have noticed you don't hear me saying, hey, follow me on, like, Twitter and, like, Google Hangouts, let's hang out or freaking Skype me or, like, Instagram and, like, follow my... God, what else is there out there? <laughs> you can tell I don't get way into social media. Oh, Facebook. I I've heard that's a thing. 
got to check out my MySpace page. Go to my like freaking Zynga page. I got like a GeoCities thing going on. I got a tripod page. Y'all can hit me up on like Juno. Hit my Juno account up. No attachments over 200 kilobytes though. Join my Yahoo group, my freaking AOL group. Um, <laughs> what, I, I'm not even that old. My God, let me think. What else was there? <laughs> I'm not asking you guys to like follow me on recipes.com and like my like like my content on WikiHow and like look at all my crap on Pinterest. I'm not even on Pinterest. So yeah, the reason I don't say all of that is like every other YouTuber is because I'm not on any of that crap. So if you want to hit me up and like do some weird interactive crap, I don't do live streams. I'm not on Twitch yet. So um yeah, just check out Xmage. That's where you're likely to find me. That's where I'm likely to hold events in the future, like for example, contests, like for example, stuff that gives away really expensive stuff. So I will see you guys next video if you're not too busy playing Xmage to watch it.